All right, everybody. Hey, we are back with our next special guest speaker here on International Podcast Day. And I am really excited to hear about how this guy is using podcasting in his niche, in his journey uh, as an entrepreneur, and how he's using it to promote many things. We are so honored to have Mark Farrell from the Jewelers Philosophy Podcast join us here on International Podcast Day. What is going on, Mr. Farrell? You doing all right today? What's up, Scott? Yeah, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Rock and rolling. Good. Man, I am. Uh, when you uh, opted in to be a part of this, I was like, oh, it's such great because it's a different <laughs> kind of mindset with what you're doing with yeah. your podcast and what you do. So share with yeah. everybody out there that's watching or listening to this, you know, what, what, what are you doing? What's your, what's your bag, baby? <laughs> so I've so, uh, been a custom jeweler, professional custom jeweler for uh, over 10 years. And uh, in those 10 years, I've done a lot of different things, worn a ton of different hats. I've made uh, hundreds, of, you know, if not thousands of engagement rings and custom projects. And we, um, we started by solving a real need for our customers. So uh, we would, we, we do everything for the most part by hand, but we are making custom jewelry. So people come to us with um, a want, a need, you know, something very specific that they can't find in the store. And then we would go and fabricate it, make these dreams a reality. And um, then when we moved from Buffalo, New York down to right outside Nashville, Tennessee, which is where we are now, uh, we hooked up with a, a really great store and they do uh, mainly estate jewelry. So it's all heirloom stuff. So now we're doing a ton of work with them. And we do a lot of like redesign and taking heirloom pieces, you know, grandma's uh, stuff that nobody really wants to wear, but it's sitting in a safe and it's got sentimental value. And we're redesigning it for new customers. So that's been the last 10 years. So um, then uh, after joining uh, 2CCX, right, um, which I know probably a lot of the people that you're talking to are, are from there, um, shifting to the contribution end. So now that I'm extremely comfortable, it's like, you know, 10 years, I have 15 years actually being a jeweler, 10 years being professional. Um, and then, you know, now no, learning all the skills, having all of the, all that background and everything like that. Now it's, it's contribution time, right? So helping other jewelers and artists uh, on their path to build a successful business because so many artists, right? They start a business from the technician standpoint, from the point of, you know, I want to, I want to do this. this is really what I want to make. And they think that it's just about the art, right? It's just about um, their product. And they think if they make the product and they make it the best way that they can, that it's going to equate to more money, more jobs, more everything. But the thing that so many people don't realize is that there's still only 2000 work hours in a year, right? 40 hours a week times 52, it's 2000. And so having different skills for jewelry, right? It's like fabrication, casting, engraving, stone setting, wax carving, CAD, all these things. You could do all these different things, but, and you could say yes to more things, but you can still only fill 2000 hours. And so it's, it's giving them that back end to kind of, to actually build a strong foundation um, and, and actually build their art on top of it, right? Wrap a business entity around your art and then let that grow, let that grow from there. So the, the Jewelers Philosophy Podcast is named as such because I'm Mark Farrell, the jeweler. And so it's the last three years of my journey being on this transformation going from all about the art to all about, you know, building a real business that's going to sustain my lifestyle and actually build what I want it to be. And it's, it's the mental end because we get tons of people on our social and everything like that. Cause we put up a lot of videos about, um, how to technical videos, jewelry videos, stuff like that. And everybody, you know, I did this one uh, a couple of years ago. It was crazy. And I cut this ring that had diamonds on three sides, right? And I cut it all apart and took the bottom because it was an eternity band. And I flipped them up and then I did two half shanks. So I turned one ring into two. And he was like, how'd you do that? And I'm like, that's easy. I use a soft frame. And they're like, yeah, but how'd you do it? And, it, and but that's it. Like it's a soft frame. Soft frames cut metal, right? They don't cut diamonds. So I didn't have to worry about that. And it, and it really dawned on me that it's more of a mindset, right? Yeah. It's like, if you believe it up here, you can make your hands do whatever you want. And that's the other end. People, I feel like, especially with artists, it's like they're all for trying something new when it's like a medium or they're dabbling or they're playing or experimenting. But then when it actually comes time to wrap their head around doing something, right? They get paralyzed almost. And they're like, oh, well, I can't do that. There's stones there. I'm going to X, Y, and Z. And so it, the jeweler's philosophy 
right? Our, our other social and everything else like that is, is the, the technical. You can watch it, YouTube and Instagram and everything else like that. Jewish philosophy, because it is audio, right? It's all about getting that mindset and flipping the paradigm so then you can go and achieve the things that you want to achieve the way you want to achieve them and ultimately have that build an engine that can take you to where you want to go, where your dreams are at, right? Which for most artists is making more art, making more money, having more time to do the things that you want to do, research your products, experiment with new materials, build new stuff, and just live that artist lifestyle, right? I say a lot on the podcast that with um, being an artist, a lot of it comes from, you know, we have to collect input because as an artist, it's our output, but we need to go experience the world. So we have something to put out. And I feel like so many artists get to that point, like where I was, you know, a couple of years ago where I was tied to the bench. My skills were in such high demand. I couldn't experiment. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't make my art, right? I was always selling my, my skills, my labor. And, and I wanted to really go experiment and play and, and put my message, my meaning, my art out. So it's, it's that mental end that goes really well with our visual end that we've been building for the last uh, like three or four years. I love it. I love it. I love it because it, you, you say it there, it is a different mental. They get to hear inside of your head a little totally. bit, the voices inside of our head sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like where the magic is, dude. Know, like man. that's what people don't get. They're like, how are you doing this? I'm like, man, it's all mental. Like you just got to believe it's possible and just, man, I could do that. And you know, you can't like when, when, if you're an artist, if you're a jeweler, right, you know what I'm talking about. There are tons of jobs. It's like, yeah, I can do that. Sure. Because you got to ooze that confidence. You know, it's like in business, like you got to ooze it. And then so if you sign that deal, right. And then the person walks out and you're like, yeah, it's going to be great. And you walk out, you're like, crap. Now what you got, you know, you got to spend half the time learning it or figuring it out. And then the other half the time, like executing, you know, but it, it's that thought like, yeah, I can, I can do that. It's, it's not that tough. Right. And it's, it's, it's a lot of that mental engine because as an artist, you just, you talk about it. It's your life. Like you can't turn it off. It's like being an entrepreneur. It's like, you're always, you're always working, right? Whether you want to or not, your brain doesn't turn off. And so do you find that? I don't mean to interrupt you here, but no, I, you're I'm good. Uh, do you find that you kind of have been not on an Island or you see a lot of that in your field? Or are you kind of like uh, being a podcaster in the jewelry field? Do you see a lot of others out there that you were able to model or do you go more after? I, well, I, I kind of know the answer, but I'm just throwing it out there anyway. The artist approach there. Do you find artists, yeah. like you just said, like, wow, how could you do that? How did you make that happen? And yeah. a lot of artists like to worry about the craft versus the, the, the side of things. And is that where, has that been a big surprise to get any feedback from other artists out there? Not really. I mean, so, so I, I'm lucky a few things, right? Um, I, I haven't really, so <laughs> uh, I've only listened to one podcast, which I know is terrible. Uh, and and it's, it's Russell's podcast, right? The uh, Marketing Secrets. So, I love it. So, uh, you know, there's that, but it's like, I feel like there's two different mindsets, right? And I know Russell's a big one on like hacking, right? Like you, you find things, and I have, I have an episode up about modeling, right? And it's, it's really important. Modeling is, is super huge. And so I am picking people to model in the podcast. It doesn't have to be art or anything like that. But, you know, when I built our, I talk a lot about my Instagram because that's where we've, we've got 20,000 followers. We actually just hit 20.5 thousand followers, right? Congrats, so, um, yeah, so we're doing, we're doing pretty good, but um, it's pretty interesting, right? So on Buffalo Craft Co uh, on Instagram, the thing that we're doing there is I didn't really follow anybody. Like I kind of... Uh, what I did was I went and I, I modeled, but I did it a little bit differently. I, I went and I took six months. I mean, I had my Instagram for now it's like seven or eight years, but I took six months in 2008 and I just used it, right? Because I hated social media. I was like, man, I do not like this. I don't understand why people are taking pictures of their food. I don't understand why everybody thinks that their life is better than everybody else's. Like this is the most ridiculous thing in the world, right? And so I, but I knew that it was going to be really powerful for my business. So I had to stop and use it. So I used it for six months and I was just a user. And I found out that I only watched videos. I only watched things that were uh, making, right? But not necessarily just jewelry. It was like I was watching cooking tutorials, ceramics tutorials, sewing, cross-stitching, 
graffiti, tattoos, cookie decorating, those pancake, anything that was like a maker thing. I was like, oh man, that's right up my alley. Right. And so that's what I decided to do. I was like, well, I make stuff. I'm just going to start filming it and I'm just going to put it out there. Right. So I started with one minute silent videos and it was jewelry is small. So I got a really great setup and I'm just filming this really small stuff. And that's kind of, so I just paved my own way. Now I'm not going to be bold enough to say that people um, saw that and then started modeling what I was doing. I don't know what else to say, but um, that's kind of what ended up happening. And so with the, with the Jewelers Philosophy podcast, I looked for, there's a lot of art podcasts, right? And a lot of it is like, they try to talk about how to and a little bit of the theory and they do a lot of interviews and stuff like that. So uh, right when Corona hit, um, I kind of, not because I, I needed to, just I was kind of bored. So I actually did 50 episodes of the Jewelers Philosophy, and now it's called the Jewelers Philosophy Live. And I did them for an hour on Instagram. And they were all interviews, interviewing my friends, interviewing other artists, jewelers, everything else. And um, so what ended up happening was I did that. And it was really hard because the platform isn't meant for a podcast. So I started right. an account. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm going to whatever. And then uh, during 2CCX, Russell was like, oh, you got to start a podcast. And I was like, all right. So I did, but I am lucky that I am a person that uh, I can talk to a brick wall and be perfectly happy, <laughs> right? Some people are like, man, I can't talk just to a camera or to a microphone and have like a total, total conversation. Baby, I could do that all day, right? And so um, I don't have a problem with that. And so I'm kind of just doing what comes off the cuff. You know, I really like the Marketing Secrets podcast because it's random. You know, it's, it's like the beautiful little thoughts that are like, man, I, this helped me. This is what I'm thinking about. And if I'm thinking about it and you're paying attention to me, you're paying attention to everything else that I'm doing, this is going to help you somehow. Right. And so it's like, I do it, I do it kind of like Russell in the sense that, um, I started recording stuff in my car because I, I have a little bit of a commute. So, but I've got a lav mic, so I'll do that. But then I've got my podcasting mic, you know, so anywhere I am, if I need to record something, I just do it. I'm also massively dyslexic. So um, I've been recording stuff on my phone all the time. I mean, I have a 256 gig iPhone and I've maxed it out. I max it out like every two months. So <laughs> a little, it's a little crazy. It's, it's okay. But the, the thing that takes for a lot of people like, wow, they're like, that's a lot. Are you doing all the editing yourself or you're outsourcing that to others to help you out with that? Mark. So I was, um, in the beginning, I mean, the first right now, I think today we put up an episode on the Jewelers philosophy on all of our platforms. We put up three episodes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and so I was doing all the editing for the first maybe 10 or 15 of them. Um, I mixed a, an album with a buddy of mine. It's not a real album, but like we made a full length, like 15 track record on my Mac in like 2005, maybe. Um, and so I knew how to use GarageBand. So when it was like podcasting, I was like, man, I'm in, but, right. and I, I edit uh, for the first two years of my, um, Instagram stuff, I was recording and I was editing everything. So, and I was doing it all in, um, you know, I only use Mac. I said, I'm dyslexic. So it reads everything to me, which is great. Um, so I use like iMovie and I'm, I'm familiar with GarageBand. So I was doing all the editing, but now I've actually got a, um, a three person team. Uh, I've got two film guys and then I've got an audio guy. So my audio guy does my, my podcasting and does the, um, the video editing for that. And then I just shifted uh, a few months ago, maybe like three or four. That's when I, I hired all these people. So now they're actually capturing all of my content, which is great. So that means that I can actually focus on the things that I want to do, which is creating the content and making the jewelry and really putting out the right message. And then, uh, but I'm working really closely with them to make sure that the content that they're making is is right. And that's, it's a trick, right? But it's like, after a few months, like we're starting to get really great products, both podcasts and um, video content. So um, it's new, uh, but it's, it's going along really well. So no, I don't do it myself anymore. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's good. But that's the smart thing is you're delegating it off and you're you, doing what you get you rocking. Yeah. Along. You know what totally. I mean? And the other things, totally. the, the tedious stuff go to, as we just had uh, a previous one talking about, you know, you're hourly, you know, your number yeah. and how to outsource yeah. and support there for it. What's totally. been the biggest surprise with your podcast? I think it just comes out. That was just a surprise that you didn't expect at all. It was uh, I mean, I was tough when I started, right? Because I was like, well, I wonder how the migration is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got over 10,000 followers on Instagram so I can do the swipe up and I actually mocked Russell's tiles. So I, I put up all the same tiles that he's got only with my picture, like, Hey, um, which is funny. 
Um, but you know, it's like I was getting in the beginning, it's like I get 20 swipe ups and then, and now it's like I get hardly none, but with 23 episodes and today is Wednesday, there's three episodes a week. So seven weeks, this is the eighth week, right? Um, I've got a thousand downloads in eight weeks. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I think the thing that's crazy is that it's actually helping people, right? Like, I mean, we all do it. Like, I feel like very few people get into podcasting because a, they like hearing their own voice because I actually don't, I actually don't listen to my podcast. Like I record it and I give it to my guy. I make sure the intro and the outro is good. And then I just publish. Right. Like I don't, I don't need to listen to it again. Uh, And so I think there's something magical in there, but I think it's interesting that, you know, it's like, I'm putting it out to like, I'm putting a lot into it, you know, and I'm recording tons. I mean, I'll record four or five in a day if I, if I, if they hit me. Um, and so the fact that now it's like, it's, it's got enough of it. People are like, Oh, I, I found it. I'm on episode five. Like I can't, it's, it's awesome. You know, somebody put up the other day and they were like, best way to start your day. And it was with the, the tile of the podcast, you know? So it's that it, like seeing the actual benefit, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's why I'm doing it is to help people and to see that it actually is, is it's pretty cool, you know? And it's, it's not even cool for me. I'm not like, Oh man, that's so great. You know, it's, it's cool for them. Like, I'm like, this is badass. Like I've always two years ago before I did any of this really. And I was just starting down the entrepreneurial path and like really shifting and, and focus, you know, changing my focus from my, my art based product to the messaging and the way that I produce it and everything else like that. You know, it was, it's kind of interesting that, um, I remember I was telling all my friends, I was like, man, I just want to find a way to make a living, right? Make money off of the thoughts in my head, right? Because I've been told my whole life, like you see the world way differently. And I believe it, you know, I mean, I do like, I see things people don't see and, but getting them out is, is the trick, you know? And when no one's paying attention, it's like, um, I can't remember who said it. Somebody said it, uh, but like, you can't, you can only help people that are swimming towards you. Right. Mm -hmm. And I felt like for so many years, like all my friends, everything, it was like, you know, I got lots of friends that produce, make, and, and do art and everything. And I'm like, dude, you got to do this. You should try this. You are like, I'm not going to do that. And it's, you're just shouting into the wind, you know, mm-hmm. but now it's like, I've actually got people that are paying attention and choosing that. And it's great. You know, I mean, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Like the reason I'm putting out so much of this stuff and the reason that I'm doing it isn't because like, I feel a need to get it out of my head, but at the end of the day, like I'm putting it out to help other people. Like, yeah if they're not being helped, I want to know. So then I can change it so I can do it because that's the whole reason I'm not doing it because I think I'm the best, man. I'm just hopelessly average. Right. I just am willing to put in the time and the effort to put myself out there and and put my views out and say, yo, this worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. If you've got some problems, give it a whack. You know, what do you got to lose? Well, that's always good too. You said something very, very importantly there. Getting the, the thoughts in our heads or the things that we have in our heads are great, but it doesn't help anybody by being just in our head. You totally. get all the knowledge in the world, whether it's jewelry or note investing or the, uh, you know, women's health or pets yeah. doesn't do any good inside our noggin where it just totally. floats with yourself. You've got to get it out there and let the swimmer swim in the same direction, come and come and find you. Right. Totally. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's the biggest thing is that it's uh, it's so important to, to do that. I mean, the other thing is that I've got, I got four or three kids and my oldest is four and my youngest is one. And, you know, I think about that stuff. And the other thing that I I look forward to is, you know, um, I mean, we never know what's going to happen, right? I'm not trying to be morbid, but we never know what's going to happen, right? I got to go to work after this. And it's like, I, you know, who knows, maybe I'll get in a car crash. I don't think I will, but it's possible. And for me, it's like, I want to be able to get out as much as I can, not only to help other people, but also like when they're old enough to like see some of that stuff, it's going to be really cool for them to be able to kind of do it because it's, it's funny how much of what the podcast is, is like an adult version of like what I tell my kids, you know, and a lot of times it's that same kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's my information, you know, and, and it's easier for me to get it out now, you know, and, and, I, and I'm kind of looking at that a little bit too. So um, it's interesting that it's like, cause when you die, right, if it's all up here, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, you can't download it. You can't get it out. So get it out where you can, because you don't know when you're not going to be able to anymore. Yeah. It's like you're doing your own personal Vulcan mind meld 
with yourself. Kinda, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm building my own my own digital palace of knowledge. I don't know, it's crazy. <laughs> like, your digital audio clone for the yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, why not? You know, it's like it's just uh, it's cool, and it's cool to see the amount too. I mean, the amount like it's cool to see the quantification, right? Like even on my Instagram and on the podcast, it's like I get 23 episodes up, and I'm like, damn. 23 episodes and they're live like people can listen to them and I got 30 sitting on my desktop you know but it's it's cool that um when you think about it like the amount of information that you can compile and like I'm gonna use the term like dump right it's like you you compile it and then you dump it It, it's kind of interesting that like the quantification of that is you look at it and you're like man that's that's all that was all up here like it and if you if you're not getting it out you don't get that. Right. But it's like when you go and you write something and you look back and you got, you know, 40 pages, you're like, damn, 40 pages. That was all up in my head. Like, yeah, it, it's cool to see that. And then it, it's, it's harder to turn it off. Like when you can see the amount, the vastness of it, um, it's kind of addicting, you know, you're like, man, I got to keep going. <laughs> right. Well, and it's the thing you, you, you know, you've, you've got, we all have experiences. We all come from a different aspect of things. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet too, that especially you mentioned having young ones, getting to the point where they get older and can go back and listen to that journey yeah. um, and, and hearing things. And we all think, especially these days, we're lucky. Who wouldn't love to go back and listen to Abraham Lincoln's podcast during the civil war? You know right? what I mean? <laughs> or listen to what, you know, Theodore Roosevelt was doing with everything that kind of, yeah. not only just those big figures, but, the people that we're close to, the people that, you know, hey, what, what are they thinking? Where are they going through an aspect? And that's really the beautiful thing about podcasting. If you're going to be open yeah. with it like you are, it adds a whole new dimension to that experience, that learning thing, because you're telling stories, not just teaching. You're really sharing and adding more stuff to it, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, and that's part of it, you know. It's like the more, I mean, as an artist, right, it, it's easier for me to understand sometimes because, you know, so many people – talk about, you know, the, um, like when you talk about selling art, right. The people don't necessarily like the, the product, right. This, like, this is actually handmade from a friend of mine. This is one thing, right. But right. his story is part of the reason that I love this mug and that I've used it for every single day for the last, uh, eight years. Like I, that story has, you know, something. So it's like, as, as an artist, I feel like it's important um, and, and we talk a lot about it as artists that, you know, people aren't just buying your art, they're buying a piece of you. Right? right. And so that's a little bit different. Right. So the podcast thing for me, it's, it's easier to, you know, um, man, but I, you know, it's like, I ask questions. I am not afraid of any of that stuff. So, you know, for me, it, it's really freeing and it's really nice because I can just put it out and then, like let it ride. And some of them hit harder than others, right? Some of them are better than others, but um, it's, I feel like it's the accumulation, you know, it's like when you go back and you look at it, I mean, that's really the essence of what it is. And the more I can get people to know me, the more they buy into what you're selling or saying, or, um, you know, presenting or how you're doing it. And since I've got both ends, I've got the visual and then I've got the, the psychological, you know, it's like the two kind of wash, uh, yep. And I'm seeing that kind of play back and forth a little bit now, which is really nice. Well, it's a nice thing too, because when you do share yourself, that's the one, because what you said, I think is very, very valuable because I think those that are just interview shows where they just interview yeah. other people, other people, that's great. They don't get to know the host a lot, a lot of times. And I think that right. individual episodes do much better because like, I didn't know that about you. I want to yeah. know this about you. Forget Fred and Wilma over there. I, yeah. I learned more about Mark this episode and it did better. And that's why you can think something like you, uh, a lot of people, I want to have a big name. I want Simon sitting yeah. in my pocket. Like, that's great. But the more nuggets, the more value comes from the internal yeah. fonts of the people that are just average Joes, like totally. you and me. And it's okay to be average, but it's totally. also, you got to be yourself, right? And yeah. don't be afraid to be yourself. And that's the thing, you know, I mean, I think it, it's pretty cool when you, when you go and you actually look at that stuff that it, um, that's really what it is. I mean, when I was doing the, the live stuff on Instagram, you know, I did 30 episodes with people or 35 episodes that were interviews. Right. And man, they were like through the roof. Like I had like hundred people watching the whole time, you know, for a couple of them and it was great. And then I wouldn't have a guest, 
and I, and I couldn't pitch it. Right. And I couldn't leverage their followers versus my followers. And I would get like 15 people, right. I'd still do the show, but I remember like that, like I could see that. And that kind of messed with me a little bit. I'm like, man, you know, yesterday I had like a hundred people now I've got 15, but I still, you know, I still put it on and everything, but it, it was, um, it was a little bit harder because I wasn't getting, it's like I was trying to present the stuff that I'm presenting now on the on my actual platform, my actual podcast platform, and it, and it it's hitting a lot harder now. Like people are getting these comments. Oh, you got Tigo on next, man. She's great, um, and so she's a good friend of mine. Uh, and so you know, it's it's really awesome to see the uh, how that kind of plays a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. and, and now it's, it's a little bit, it's nicer because I'm not sitting there like watching what's happening and, and, and getting that feedback and being able to compare, you know, it's like I put it out and then you just got to let it ride. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's new, it's new. It's only eight weeks old. Like it's not, I'm not going to be top anything yet, you know? Uh, and I know that, but it, it's, I don't know. It's a little well, bit, I, think it's, I like it, it more. I, I, I think it's better that way. Cause then you, you it's not. When you do, when you record it and throw it out there, you say, okay, I'm great with it. But when you are used to doing something live and like, what, did I do something wrong? Yeah, and it's like, a whole different mentality and a whole different chemical yeah. reaction in our brain. Like what I, like you said, I had a hundred people. I'm excited. Well, I have 50. I'm instantly disappointed, even though it yeah. has nothing to do with you, you know? Totally. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, it was, it was a little weird, but it was, uh, I learned stuff from it and it was cool, but I definitely, I mean, I still like doing live stuff and everything else. Like this is great. And, you know, but the, uh, uh, getting, getting out of your head like that is, is good. You just got to realize that everything is a build, right? Everybody starts from zero. When you start an account, it's always a zero, right? You just gotta, you gotta dump into it and wait for people to find it and pitch it and crossbreed and keep going. That migration thing is real. It's tough, it but you could do it, you know? Exactly. Mark, what's the best way for our people that are watching us out here, our podcast family, our podcast peeps out here to follow up and see what you're doing, follow what you're doing and connect with you? So uh, two things. The first thing is you can find uh, the jeweler's philosophy on like all the different platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, um, you know, Stitcher, whatever, all of them, Google. Um, and then, uh, so, so that's the, the podcast. And then uh, also you can connect with us on Instagram and it, that is at Buffalo Craft Co. Uh, there is the, uh, at the Jewelers Philosophy on Instagram as well. And then we're on Facebook with those same two handles at uh, Buffalo Craft and the Jewelers Philosophy. So we're out there uh, and yeah, just living the dream, man. Putting out as much as we can, trying to help as many people as possible. Love it, Mark. And thanks so much for coming on International Podcast and really just delivering, man. Really just hey. whoop, just two two barrels blazing, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for having me on, Scott. It's been great. And Tigo is amazing. I'm super pumped. I'll be watching that. Good stuff, man. See you later. All right. Later.